Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic was released in Japan in July of 1987 on the Famicom Disk System. The game was later reskinned and released in the United States in October of 1988 as Super Mario Bros. 2. The decision was made not to release the Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. 2 in the States because the game was deemed as too difficult and too similar to its predecessor, the original Super Mario Bros. The American version of Super Mario Bros. 2 would later be released for the Nintendo Famicom as Super Mario USA. Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic translates to Dream Factory, Heart Pounding Panic. Doki Doki Panic's plot revolves around two children being kidnapped while reading a book by a hand that reaches out from the book and traps them inside. Their family hears their cries for help and goes in after them. Doki Doki Panic has several differences in appearance and gameplay to its western cousin Mario 2. The biggest difference is the lack of a run button. Even when holding down B, you still move at the same speed. This creates some interesting dilemmas in the game. For instance, on level 1-1, only Mama and Lina, or Luigi and Peach, are able to jump across the waterfall and skip to the end of the level. There are a few other instances where character selection will actually affect where you can go on levels. The lack of the run button really does change the gameplay and makes the game slightly more difficult. Another gameplay mechanic that was drastically changed were the aggression levels of the Phantos once you steal a key from them. They don't pursue you in the room when you pick up the key, and they're also slightly less aggressive when pursuing you outside of the room. Typically, if you drop the key, he'll leave you alone completely. Rather than having Claw Grip as a boss in Mario Bros. 2, Doki Doki Panic has a super powerful Mouser boss that attacks extremely erratically. This change was made when the game was brought to the States because the original White Mouser boss was deemed as too powerful. All the characters handle the same as their North American counterparts, with Imogen playing like Mario, Mama like Luigi, Lina like the Princess, and Papa like Toad. These were all simple reskins of the characters. One of the only major differences between the two versions in terms of character skins is that the characters don't shrink when they only have one health remaining, like Mario 2. Between the levels, you aren't able to choose different characters. Instead, each character has their own path of all the levels in the game. This actually works because Doki Doki Panic actually has a save feature. Aside from the character reskins, several items and things in the game look slightly different. The shells in Doki Doki Panic are blackface heads. The first time I pulled one of these out of the ground, I definitely had kind of a WTF kind of moment. The magic potions that make doors appear are now magic lamps instead. Rather than having the giant hawk at the end of each level, instead it's a mask. The leaves from the things that you pull out of the ground are black rather than red, and the animations were added to the cherries, pow blocks, and vines. The waterfalls in Doki Doki Panic also move amazingly fast and are almost seizure-inducing. Most of the music between Doki Doki Panic and Mario 2 remains the same, with the exception of the underworld music when you go through a door by using a lamp. Another change in the audio is the enemies give off a somewhat unsettling scream when you kill them. Overall, Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic is a pretty good game that was made better when it was modified as a Mario game. It's worth checking out, especially if you're a fan of Mario 2. However, Mario 2 is the better game. Doki Doki Panic isn't really worth importing either because it costs on average over $100, which is way too much.